and welcome to session five of our 10 sessions on uh, the mental health and wellness program for all you amazing women. Today is all about exploring chakra healing it is one of my favorite topics and I'm so excited to be sharing with all of you all of this really juicy information that is going to help you on your healing journey. The more we understand our energetic bodies and how that works with our physical, emotional, and spiritual selves, the more we can work to heal ourselves on this energetic level and to reduce the risk of physical and mental ailments that come along with uh, chakras being out of harmony. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you all. Perfect. Okay. Turn this down a bit. Okay. So I have a little presentation here. I'm very excited to be sharing this topic. So again, welcome to Exploring Chakra Healing with me, Hannah Stinson of Healing with Hannah, and of course with Hope for Stomach Cancer and the Stomach Cancer Sisters. So welcome, 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 welcome. I am Hannah Stinson. I am a divine healer, a spiritual reader, a life coach, and a yoga teacher. I am also a chronic disease warrior. And so as a chronic disease warrior, I often felt as if I was not supported on my mental health and well-being journey. I was not taught proper self-care practices to help with my overall well-being. And so creating this program really allowed me to be for others what I didn't have for myself. And that is truly a dream come true. So thank you for being here. And I know this session is going to be so amazing. So what is a chakra? <laughs> chakra in Sanskrit or chakra means wheel. And we like to think of the chakra system as these energy wheels of our bodies. Okay. The chakra system first originated in the Vedas. And the Vedas are an ancient Hindu text that dates back to approximately 1500 BCE, but probably even earlier. Many cultures such as Buddhists, Egyptians, Chinese, Greek, Incas, Mayas, indigenous peoples, just to name a few, have recognized the chakra system. They recognize that these energy centers are a natural or sorry, a reflection of the natural law that exists in the entire universe, but is intertwined in our physical selves. So if that's a lot to take in, don't worry, we are going to dive deep and digest this a little bit more. And please know that you're more than welcome to take notes, but I'm, I've also included a resource for all of you that is in the email that will have all of this information as well. So you can download it to your computer, your phone, print it out, whatever is best for you to just continue to assist you on this journey. So like I said, chakras are like energy vortexes that live inside you. As Margarita Alcantara says, and she's someone who I've learned about chakra healing through, you can think of your chakra system as your spiritual bloodstream. Blood carries oxygen, nutrients, and hormones throughout the entire body, which helps to regulate and balance the body and protects the body by removing waste products and clotting when the body is harmed. Much is the same way when your bloodstream connects uh, and supports many physical bodily symptoms, your chakra connects and supports your physical self as well as your energetic self. So that's what I meant when we said, sorry, when I said that the, uh, this is like the, nat the universe, the natural laws of the universe living in our physical selves. The foundation of the chakra system consists of seven major chakras within the body, and they all serve a pur purpose, and they are all interconnected. We are going to only cover the seven major chakras, even though there are many more, uh, to give you really a baseline understanding of this type of work. So the three lower chakras, the root chakra, the sacral plexus, and the solar plexus are considered to be our physical chakras. They ground us as human beings on earth. Then our upper three chakras, our throat, our third eye, and our crown are connected, are considered to be our spiritual chakras, focusing on our connection to the divine and our higher selves. So both the physical and spiritual chakras are connected through the heart chakra, which is in the middle. So let's start with the root chakra. We always wanna move from the bottom up. We always start from the root chakra and move our way up when we're healing our chakra system, when we're working to heal this energetic parts of our body. Because 
even though you might be like very excited to connect with your intuition and be more connected to source and the divine, if your root chakra is out of harmony, it's going to be very hard to connect with those spiritual chakras. You're not going to have the same groundedness and self-centeredness and confidence even to get to that point. So we will always start with the root chakra. So after this, if you're like, oh my goodness, this really resonated with me, I need to do this work. Not only can you reach out to me for further support, but you can also come back to the resource and start with the root chakra, okay? So this is located at the base of the spine. It represents safety, security, survival, and our core sense of being and our family or our tribal connection. So when I say tribal connection, I bring that up because back in the days when we were tribes, before we got to this wonderful technological age, we often, if you did something that was against your tribe's values or ethics or rules even, you were shunned, right? You were often exiled from the tribe and asked to leave. And then you were on your own, which meant that you had to do all of that fighting for your life, finding food, whatever it is, by yourself. And that can cause a lot of disharmony. So this stuff goes way, 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 way back. And so nowadays, usually it's our family, okay? So when the root chakra is out of harmony, we don't trust nature. We feel really ungrounded and disconnected from Mother Earth. We have issues around our identity in relation to our families. We do not feel like our primal needs are being met. That means food, shelter, clothing, water, and love, because love is a primal need. We often function out of fear and we feel unsafe in the body. Fear is a huge emotion of the root chakra and ends up really affecting some of the body parts that the root chakra is associated with. And we're not going to get into all of that today. I just really want you to understand what the difference is of being out of harmony and being in harmony so you can start to recognize that within yourself. When our root chakra or muladhara in Sanskrit is in harmony, we are profoundly connected to nature. We trust the natural laws of the universe. So we trust that just like the, um, the seasons, right? Just like we go through winter, spring, summer, fall, we're gonna go through that in our own lives. We're able to connect with the ebb and flow of life, right? That's part of connecting with the seasons. We are connected to our family in healthy ways. We understand that no matter what is going on, we will always be provided for. And we feel very safe in our bodies. And so if you're sitting here and taking this in and thinking, wow, I really think my root chakra is out of harmony, you're not alone, especially with the state of the world and everything that you guys are going through, living with cancer, going through remission, going to appointments, radiation, chemo, surgery, whatever it is, that can cause a lot of root chakra disharmony. So again, you're not alone. And this is why we're learning about this stuff. And we're going to do this work. Next, we move up to the sacral plexus chakra or Svatisana. And so Svatisana is located two inches below the navel. It represents our center of emotions and creativity and our connection with our sexuality. And so when this chakra is out of harmony, we really have difficulty expressing our feelings or maybe we're completely disconnected from them. Maybe we don't allow ourselves to feel our feelings at all. We are out of touch with pleasure. And that doesn't just mean self-pleasure or sex. That means pleasure using the senses because that's what our senses, our five senses are for, to, to live pleasurable lives. We hold on to unprocessed anger. We feel resentful as if we aren't able to birth our creations into the world. That could be literally birthing a baby or a business or an idea. We have relationship issues, platonic and real, or romantic, or maybe both. We experience reproductive issues and we have lots of feelings of shame around our sexuality. And so I am someone who lives with a lot of sacral plexus disharmony as I do have endometriosis and endometriosis is actually a physical ailment of long-term sacral plexus chakra damage. So it does happen. And so for me, this is a chakra that I'm constantly coming back to, to harmonize. And something to remember too, is that this work doesn't ever stop. Once you start to work to harmonize your chakras and work with these energy centers of your body, you're going to be constantly doing this work because we constantly have to clear and balance our chakras. They will 
pick up stuff in the everyday world. So when we are in harmony, when our sacral plexus is in harmony, we are in flow with our creative expression. We are in touch with pleasure and we are able to share our feelings in a very healthy way. We're able to create and maintain healthy relationships as well as we're connected to the emotional aspects of our sexuality, right? Because our sexuality isn't just physical. There's emotions that go along with it. We feel at peace with our abundance because abundance also lives in the sacral plexus. We have a healthy relationship with money and are able to cultivate abundance into our lives in a balanced fashion. Meaning you're not spending more money than you have or becoming broke because of you not having that stable relationship with money or you're not, the opposite is hoarding money and not spending any of it. It's a very balanced um, relationship and you understand that this financial abundance can often come from your inner abundance, right? And then we get into the solar plexus or Manipura. Manipura is located two inches above the navel and represents our self-esteem, our sense of worth, and our internal power. When the solar plexus is out of harmony, we, need, we feel like we need to dominate and control every single thing in our lives. We really have a need to keep up appearances, like keeping up with the Joneses, needing to have the nicest things, the best clothes, the best makeup, you know, whatever that means to you. <laughs> you we often function out of feelings of inadequacy, which can often cause us to feel like we need to keep up appearances because we don't feel confident within ourselves. We don't respect ourselves and you can actually manifest self-hatred when this chakra is really out of harmony. And the biggest one here too is giving your power away to others, which ends up leaving you with no sense of self. And so if any of that is feeling like hitting home, know that stomach cancer is a physical manifestation or ailment of solar plexus disharmony. And this comes from years and years and years and years of disharmony. This doesn't happen overnight, right? It's like I shared with my endometriosis. That has been going on for years and years and years. And of course, it's still a medical condition, but there's energetics and environmental causes that can influence it. And that's the same with cancer, right? It's the same with any disease. So when Manipura, the solar plexus, is in harmony, we feel whole and centered in who we are because we know our self-worth. We cultivate our personal power into very healthy ways, Like right? We're not power tripping or trying to take control. We allow our internal power to guide us, which means you're not constantly going to somebody else or the external to get validation, to get answers. You allow yourself to listen to your internal voice. There's a balance between your spiritual and material worlds. You're not focusing too much on only your spirituality and bypassing all of the physical reality or the 3D aspects of your life or the opposite, right? You're not focusing only on the physical and rejecting all aspects of the spiritual. We develop tolerance and acceptance of our lives and where we're at, as well as a sense of inner peace and calm. So the solar plexus is one that a lot of us, not just people with stomach cancer or cancer in general, a lot of us deal with this disharmony because a lot of us are constantly giving our power away. When you wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you do? Do you grab your phone? Do you check the news? Do you look at Instagram, your Facebook, your email, your texts? Well, I'm going to be honest, that's giving your power away the minute you wake up in the morning. So that gives permission for the rest of your day for you to constantly be giving your power away. I promise you, the news, your emails, your texts, social media, it can wait. If you do anything, when you wake up first thing in the morning, give that time to yourself whether that's through meditation or journaling or going for a walk, working out, just sitting and enjoying your cup of tea or coffee without any distractions. It's going to look different for all of us. But I can tell you that, that adding that little extra of not checking your phone or whatever, the minute you wake up is going to allow you to start to heal your solar plexus. So a little tip that I'm going to leave you with on that is 
when you go to bed or 30 minutes before you go to bed, put your phone on airplane mode. That's already going to get you to stop checking things. So you're not looking at a screen right before you go to bed, which affects our sleep, right? And then it affects our overall health. And then do your best to keep your phone on airplane mode until maybe 30 minutes after you wake up or an hour after you wake up. You'll know what's best for you. You don't have to do it for two to three hours like I do, but you can do just a little bit, just a little bit. So you can start to practice starting your days from a sense of internal power. Next, we have the heart chakra, Anahata. Anahata is located in the center of our chest and represents love and compassion. How we get in touch with our higher self in relation to the rest of the world, right? Like I mentioned, our heart chakra is the bridge between our physical chakras and our spiritual ones. When Anahata is out of harmony, we feel really disconnected from ourselves. We have a difficult time loving from a genuine place whether that's giving or receiving, we do not feel deserving of love, which can really affect us to be out of touch with who we are. And because all of this can lead to, to depression from lack of connection to yourself. And so when Anahata or the heart chakra is in harmony, we are fully connected to ourselves. We can cultivate joy very easily. We love and accept ourselves and others as an extension, right? Because the more we love and accept ourselves, the more we can show that to other people. We give and receive love so genuinely with no strings attached, and we cultivate compassion for ourselves and others. And so again, ana anahata disharmony is very, very common. Often, we don't feel deserving of love because of our conditioning as women or the things we went through as a kid, maybe it's trauma you're still carrying. Whatever the case may be, know that you can feel this very, very, very imperative chakra, okay? I love working on healing the heart chakra. And of course, after I share all of this wonderful information with you, we are gonna discuss harmonization techniques for each chakra so you can begin to integrate. Now we're going to move up to the spiritual chakras. Our throat chakra is our first of the spiritual chakras, also known as the Vizuda. A Vizuda is located in the throat and represents our communication, our self-expression, our authentic voice, and where faith and understanding combine. So when Vizuda is out of harmony, we often have difficulty speaking our truth or expressing ourselves. We feel silenced or judged for what we say, which can then just perpetuate us having difficulty speaking our truth. We feel out of alignment with who we are, and sometimes this can even bring us to feel out of touch with our will to live. And that is a very, very um, intense disharmony, right? Again, that's like years and years of mental disharmony with the throat chakra. But of course, when Vizuda is in harmony, our will to live is strong and we're able to follow our dreams. We can speak our truth, which means we say what we mean and we mean what we say. That's a really big part of throat chakra harmony. We express ourselves easily and that turns into creatively and authentically. We are able to listen to our inner voice. And of course, there's also a balance between being able to listen, observe, and speak and share. Because of course, when the throat chakra is in harmony, of course, it's easy to share your truth, to speak your mind, to be authentic about all of that. But it's just as important to be able to sit back and listen, to observe, to know when you don't need to speak and you can just hold space for somebody else without making it about yourself. And of course, then we have the third eye chakra. Just making sure I make that, make that. sorry, I'm back. I lost, I lost where I was. Where did it go? I'm sorry, guys.
There we go. Sometimes, you know, I've been using Zoom for years, but I still struggle with it. <laughs> so our next is our third eye chakra, also known as Ajna. So Ajna is located in the center of the forehead. Actually, I should have updated that. That's wrong. Ajna is located right between the eyebrows here because it's actually our penile gland. And so our penile gland is located in the center of our brains, right? So that's, that's why it's more here than up here. <laughs> so this represents our connection to our intuition, our sixth sense, and it is the center of our spiritual wisdom and insight. Now, of course, a lot of research around the chakras will say sixth sense, mm -hmm, right? For, um, for our intuition. But I personally think that our intuition was our first sense, was before we were born, before we were, had the ability to smell, to see, to hear, to touch, to taste. Because your intuition has been with you since forever. It's with your soul. So it's not something that you develop. It's already there, right? It's been there. It was in the womb with you. When you when, with you when you were first born. It's been with you this whole time. Because often we, know, we can think of it as our gut instinct, right? When you, often when we're feeling anxious or something, we feel it in our stomach. And that's a communication. That's a way of coming in touch with your intuition, okay? So when Ajna, the third eye chakra is out of harmony, we focus mainly on our intellect, rejecting all aspects of our spirituality. We don't trust our intuition. Maybe we're not even aware of our intuition. We only see the physical reality of life. And often, oh, I'm so sorry, I have an alarm. Going. My medication. I'm on a lot of medication right now, as you guys probably can relate to. So I apologize for that. Um, we often carry fear around being able to connect to our own inner wisdom. And that's a big one with Ajna that I see with my clients, that I see with my friends and family, is that there's this fear that how can I know what I need? How can I know the answers? Trust me, you do. <laughs> you do. And so it's about understanding you don't have to be fearful of your own innate inner wisdom. And it's innate, it's a part of you, right? It's always been there. And so when Ajna is in harmony, we connect to our intuition and awareness on a daily basis. We trust our inner vision and we act upon what our intuition is telling us. The more you act on your intuition, the stronger it's gonna get because you're feeding it, you're allowing it to, it's like a muscle in a way, right? Our penile gland, our brain, our brain's a muscle. So let's think about that, think about that, that, this organ is so powerful, this penile gland is so powerful that the more you listen, the stronger it's gonna get. And that's how we are able to connect and live and honor our intuition on a daily basis, right? So we have a deep knowing beyond what we can physically see. We know that this isn't it. <laughs> we are in touch with our clairvoyant gifts and that's what our clairvoyancy is intuitive information. Um, through vision or sight, but you can also start to develop your other clairs. Okay, so there's clear audience, which is when we hear messages from the divine, not just see things. There's clear sentient, is just clear knowing. Okay, and there's a few more. We don't need to get into them today, but know that like it's going to show up differently for all of us. And so, be curious. Don't be afraid to tap into your inner wisdom because it's going to be so helpful on this journey and then we're going to end with the seventh chakra the crown chakra also known as sahasrara and is located at the crown of our head right there representing our connection to the divine and our higher selves or god buddha allah the bodhisattva whatever it is that you believe in so when this chakra is out of harmony, we feel completely disconnected from the divine source, universe, God, Buddha, Allah, like I said. We might even be angry at the divine. You know, the stuff that you're going through is not easy. I can relate. And so sometimes it's just easier to be angry and think there is no God or there isn't like there can't be because I wouldn't be going through this. But there's always a higher purpose to what's happening. We have difficulty trusting our life path. 
We can feel depressed and alone, maybe even unsatisfied with where our life is at and really have a hard time of letting go of anxiety and fear. And so crown chakra disharmony, again, is very popular because a lot of people have completely disconnected themselves from the idea that there's something more than this and that we are actually all connected, that there's a sense of unity, right? And so when we work to heal this chakra, we start to notice that when it's in harmony, that we understand that we are all connected, right? We're living in the knowledge of unity. We're all one. We understand that we are individual reflections of the divine. Isn't that amazing to think about? I'm a reflection of the divine. You are a reflection of the divine. We are the divine. We trust that we are connected to the divine source. And we really understand that our individual identity goes beyond this physical realm. And again, we are able to really easily elevate our consciousness to learn new things and take in new concepts with such stride and understand and integrate them into our lives. So that's a lot of information <laughs> to throw at all of you. And it's not to make you think, oh goodness, like all of my chakras are out of harmony. Usually if you've never done this work and you're not familiar, yeah, they probably are all out of harmony, okay? When I started doing this work seven years ago, I was a complete energetic mess. And so this is consistent, constant work. We know our healing journeys never end. And so this is a big aspect of that, that when we heal our chakras, when we're working to bring them back into harmony, it's something we have to do almost every day. And the more you're aware and you learn about all of this, the easier it is. So we're gonna talk a little bit of harmonization techniques for each. Of course, this can, we can go way more in depth than what I'm sharing here, but I just wanted to give you some really, really easy, tangible things you can start to do. So with each um, chakra, I have included crystals and essential oils. And you will notice that some of the crystals and essential oils will go overlap or work for the root chakra and as well as the heart or whatever. And I, I'm sharing it that way so that if you do go out to buy these crystals, these essential oils, you're not having to buy a billion for one chakra. You can actually use them for the different ones, save you some money. And that's the beautiful thing about working with those. So crystals are little energy vortexes as well, right? Each crystal holds an energetic response. And so the crystals for the root chakra or the ones that I would suggest are black tourmaline, bloodstone and smoky quartz. All of those help with protection. Bloodstone actually helps with your, um, your circulatory system, which is somewhat connected to your chakra. So bloodstone helps with the organs that are connected for the root chakra, um, one of them being the liver. So I do have liver disease and I'm dealing with some pretty heavy stuff right now in regards to my liver. And so bloodstone is a big one that I've been um, using and working with and the one that I will take with me to my surgery. Another big one is eating root vegetables. So there's billions of root vegetables, not billions, but there's tons of root vegetables, but parsnip potatoes and squash are three of my favorite. Um, if ever I'm feeling so disconnected, so like scattered and unsafe, I will make some potatoes <laughs> and eat a bowl of potatoes. And I find that my energy just comes right back down. I'm back to being grounded. The essential oils you can work with are myrrh, patchouli, and sandalwood. And then of course, practice earthing. Walk barefoot on the earth or place your palms on a tree. Spend time in nature. That's really gonna help you come back to harmonizing your root chakra. And then with each of them, there's a chant and the chant for the root chakra is Lam, Lam, okay. Next is our sacral plexus. The crystals for the sacral plexus are amber, coral, and orange calcite. Okay, those are three of the ones of my favorite. And you can carry them around with you at any time, right? We don't have to just leave our crystals. I have some like sitting here beside me. Here's black tourmaline actually from the root chakra. Um, you can carry them with you. They don't have to just sit in your home. Some essential oils for the sacral plexus are lemon, rosewood, and lang lang. 
Fling Lang is one of my favorites, to be honest. And a big way to start to harmonize the sacral plexus is to include play into your daily routine. So have some fun, right? Like it doesn't have to be so serious. Just because we're adults doesn't mean we can't let our inner child run wild. It's actually very important to include play into your daily routine because you're coming back to connecting with your inner child, which is a whole other way of healing ourselves. And then a big one is creative expression. Like I talked about, creativity lives in this chakra. So what does that look like to you? Do you love to dance? Do you love to paint or make art, write, sing, whatever it is, gardening can even be creative expression, cooking, um, whatever that is to you, know that when you're doing those activities that love, that you love, that light you up, you're healing this chakra. And then the chant is VAM, VAM, okay? Moving on to the solar plexus. Some crystals that are great for the solar plexus are citrine, yellow agate, yellow topaz, and red jasper. And this is a citrine I have here. I'm trying to show you what I do have better in relation. The essential oils you can work with are lavender, lemon, and rosemary. I love lavender. It goes with so many different chakras. So I'm sure that's one that most of you probably already have. It's pretty popular. So know that you can use that. And also if you're like in a pinch, and you don't have lemon essential oil, and you want to like get that those same benefits and you have a lemon, cut that lemon and squeeze some of that lemon into your shower and you'll still get some of those benefits. A big one for this is getting outside of your comfort zone by trying something new. And the way that we can boost our self-confidence, our self-worth, our self-esteem is by trying something new. Even if you don't, you're not the best at it. Who cares? That's not the point. It's about showing yourself that you can show up and you can do something new and have fun with it. And then wearing the color yellow. Okay. If you're like, oh, this all this is all too much. I just need something so simple. Wear the color yellow. Okay. And then the chant for the solar plexus is Ram. Ram. The heart chakra. So some crystals for the heart chakra are emerald, jade, and rose quartz, of course. And I'm sure again, rose quartz is a pretty popular crystal. So you might already have that one at home. Essential oils you can work with are lavender, bergamot, neroli, and palmarosa. Palmarosa is one of my other faves. Probably said that for each one that I have a fave, but it's the truth. A wonderful way to start to harmonize this chakra is to buy yourself roses, okay? And maybe if roses aren't your thing, buy yourself flowers. It's about teaching ourselves that we can show ourselves the love that we want to receive, right? Because the more we start to show ourselves that love that we want to receive, the more permission we give for others to do the same. Another big one is drinking rosebud tea. And so if that's something you're interested in, I would highly suggest going to a um, Chinese grocery store to get rosebud tea or that they usually already have it, but you can also buy dried rosebuds that are, um, you know, not full of chemicals because we can't guarantee that the roses you buy at the flower shop or wherever I buy mine at the grocery store sometimes aren't sprayed with harsh chemicals and we don't want to ingest that in our bodies, right? And then a big one for harmonization of heart chakra is practicing forgiveness. And again, forgiveness isn't about really forgiving anyone else. It's about freeing ourselves. So I want you to start small because practicing forgiveness isn't always easy. And the way we can start small with practicing forgiveness is just speaking kindly to ourselves when we make a mistake. You don't have to beat yourself up or be hard on yourself because you forgot to show up to a workshop or you were late for work. Tell yourself it's okay. That's practicing forgiveness. And then the chant of the heart chakra is yum. So it almost sounds like yum, yum. <laughs> Moving into the throat chakra, the crystals that are associated are aquamarine, celestite, and blue kyanite. I actually have a blue kyanite right here. Essential oils you can work with, frankincense, hyssop, and rosemary. There you go, you see rosemary again. Um, frankincense is a really beautiful one. You actually can use that for root chakra um, harmonization as well. 
Drinking peppermint tea or slippery elm tea is a big one. It helps to soothe the throat chakra. Practice chanting or singing. Okay, I love to chant. Chanting is so wonderful because it actually helps to calm the vagus nerve and our vagus nerve runs from our head through our digestive systems and actually ends in around our cervix. So it's a, it helps to calm your entire, <laughs> your entire chakra system, right? It goes down that whole route, goes through all the nadis, which are the energy channels. And then if chanting or singing isn't your thing, just read aloud or speak out, speak to yourself when you're home by yourself, right? Like say, oh, I'm just going to go get a glass of water and I'm going to sit down and write my emails. Like speak out loud. That's going to be really helpful. And then of course, speak your truth. <laughs> we always want to speak our truth. And when we speak our truth, we must say what we mean and mean what we say. Those two go hand in hand and it's a practice. And then the chant of the throat chakra is hum, hum. Moving on to the third eye chakra. The third eye chakra, some crystals that are wonderful are amethyst, fluorite, lapis lazuli. I do have an amethyst right here. Some essential oils, frankincense, lavender, sandalwood. We've seen those ones before. If anything, get those three because they're really going to be working throughout all the chakras. I said this before, I'll say it again, act on those intuitive hints. If something's telling you to take a new route to work for, you know, your drive, take that new route. You'll most likely find out that maybe there was an accident that morning that was going to cause you to be late, or maybe you could have been in that accident, right? That's just an example. Eating foods such as beets, black currants, blackberries, blueberries, eggplant, you get the picture. That's like that dark blue, that indigo. Intend on connecting with your inner wisdom regularly. And that can be a really good way to do that is through meditation. So really carve out time to meditate every day. Even if that's like a guided meditation because you're like, I don't really like sitting still. Maybe it's a walking meditation. Cooking can be considered a meditation. It's just that intention behind connecting with your inner wisdom. And then wearing dark blue and indigo. If you really want to just take it easy with this third eye chakra um, harmonization, wear those colors. And then the chant of the third eye chakra is Sham, Sham. And then of course, lastly, we end with the crown chakra and some crystals for the crown chakra, amethyst, clear quartz, selenite. I have a clear quartz here. I have a bunch of selenite back in Edmonton where I live. I'm currently in Winnipeg visiting family. So I couldn't bring all of my crystals. But selenite, you can get in wands, like a very big version, and um, I highly suggest that. Essential oils to work with are lotus, peppermint, and sandalwood. And of course, meditation. Meditation is going to be huge, and you can really focus on meditation around um, connecting with your own wisdom, maybe, you know, connecting with source, the divine, God, Buddha, whatever you believe in. And so I will... this. Uh, Sorry, I haven't shared it in this presentation, but in the resource, you'll find the different colors that are associated with each chakra. And the color that's associated with the crown is actually three, gold, white, and purple usually. And you can imagine those colors kind of raining down, covering you in a protective blanket of light. Practicing gratitude. Gratitude is the closest thing we have to constantly being in faith and in trust with our beautiful, amazing lives. So I would really, really focus on practicing gratitude. So an easy way to do that is when you wake up in the morning before your feet touch the ground, say three things you're thankful for. I often say, thank you, breath. Thank you, body. Thank you, bed. Those are very easy ones you can start with. And then at the end of the day, when you get into bed, say aloud or maybe journal three things you're thankful for that happened that day. Okay. The more that we come back to what has happened within the last 24 hours to be grateful for, the more we'll see how we can be grateful for each moment of our lives, no matter what is going on. And then of course, some of the colors you can wear are purple and white or gold as well. 
And then of course the chant of the crown chakra is OM, which I'm sure this, the chant that you're most familiar with is OM. Okay, and now we're gonna do a meditation to end this session. Uh, that's an energetic upgrade meditation. And it's really going to allow you to tune into these different energy centers of your body and begin to clear some of this disharmony that might be living there. Okay. I'm gonna turn my music up a bit. And just setting aside if you had a notebook or anything like that, a pen and just getting comfortable in your seat. Whether you do this meditation seated or lying down is up to you. Just allow yourself to get really comfortable here. Maybe place a pillow underneath your knees to give your low back a little bit of a break. Maybe a pillow under your head. Maybe you have some essential oils. So you use some of your favorite ones to help ground you into the present moment. And then when you're ready, close your eyes or allow them to come to a soft gaze in front of your nose if closing your eyes doesn't feel safe today. Begin to focus on your breath and how it ripples through your body like waves of an ocean. Inhaling through the nose, Exhaling out the mouth. <sighs> Allow yourself to really relax on the exhales, sinking even deeper into this moment. Taking three more breaths, just like that. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling out the mouth. <sighs> Noticing your belly naturally expand on your inhale and gently contract on your exhale. Allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm and begin to notice your body making contact with the ground, allowing your mind's eye to guide you, just noticing what parts of your feet are touching the ground, allowing your awareness to travel up through your lower legs, your knees, your upper legs. Focusing on the pelvic region and the areas here that are touching the ground. Tuning into your spine, from the very low point of your spine, muladhara, all the way to your upper spine, top of your head, your crown chakra, sahasrara. Tuning into your shoulders and your neck and the position of your head. Feeling your arms hanging heavy beside you, as well as your hands. Noticing if there are any sensations in your hands. Just notice all of this for a few breaths. And then when you're ready, bringing your attention and awareness to Muladhara, your root chakra at the base of your spine. Beginning to focus your breath to the base of your spine, imagine a red wheel turning counterclockwise. And as this red wheel turns, this visualization of your root chakra, begin to notice if any sensations come up in regards to your safety and security. Knowing that you are safe to breathe into your body and breathe out any feelings of insecurity. Breathing into this area of the body, visualizing this red spinning wheel and repeat in your mind's eye, I am safe to be in my body. Allowing your attention to float to Svatisana, your sacral plexus chakra, two inches below your navel. Beginning to deepen your breath and imagine an orange wheel turning counterclockwise 
This is the energy of your sacral plexus chakra. Checking in with this chakra with curiosity and compassion to see if you are honoring your creative and sensual energy. Know you are capable of birthing your dreams into this physical world. You have so much magic lying within this area of your body. Breathe into it. Inhale into the knowing that abundance lives all around you and within you. Exhale any doubts you have around deserving abundance. Breathe and repeat to yourself in your mind's eye, I feel worthy of abundance. Breathing into Manipura, your solar plexus chakra now, two inches above your navel. On your next inhale, imagine a yellow wheel turning counterclockwise, exhaling into the energy of your solar plexus, the chakra of your personal power and self-esteem. Have you willingly or unwillingly given your power away? If so, call it back. Use your next breath in to call back your power to keep the eternal flame lit. Exhale and release any guilt you carry around not always being in control. Because you are in control right now. Repeating to yourself in your mind's eye, I can believe in myself more and more each day. Allowing your breath to guide you to the center of your chest, Anahata, your heart chakra. Taking three deep breaths into this area of your body and imagining a green wheel turning counterclockwise. Tuning into the love and compassion you show yourself, the love and compassion you show to others. And allow your breath to guide you deeper into your mind's eye as you imagine leaving rose petals on the pillows of your loved ones, your past lovers, your friends, your coworkers, those who have passed on, those who you no longer speak to. And then coming to yourself and imagine yourself looking into a large bathtub full of rose petals. And on your next exhale, you step into this rose petal bath, soaking in the love and compassion that you deserve. Repeating to yourself in your mind's eye, I love myself unconditionally. Slowly allow your breath to travel to Vizuda, your throat chakra, in the middle of your throat. Beginning to deepen your breath and imagine a light blue wheel turning counterclockwise. This is the energy of your throat chakra. Tuning into your communication styles and how you share your truth. Asking this area of the body if there is anything that wants to be shared. Remembering your message is still powerful, even if your voice shakes. On your next inhale, repeat to yourself in your mind's eye, I speak with integrity, honoring my truth. On your next exhale, coming up to Ajna, your third eye chakra, and breathing into the area of your penile gland in the center of your, your brain, 
And imagine an indigo colored wheel turning counterclockwise. Focusing on this energy body, connecting to your sensitivity to enhance your connection with your intuition. So you can begin to hear the sweet whispers and the magical messages that they bring. Breathing deeply and repeating to yourself in your mind's eye, I see what is meant for me. On your next inhale, breathing your awareness into Sahasrara, your crown chakra, imagining a purple wheel turning counterclockwise above the crown of your head, your connection with the divine. Breathing in and feeling the energy of life around you. Breathe into it. Allow yourself to begin to surrender a little more to the present moment on each exhale. Taking three deep breaths into your crown chakra. And on your next exhale, breathing deeply and repeating in your mind's eye, I know my dreams will manifest in their own divine timing. Breathing into this energetic upgrade that you have just been led through. Know that you are transmuting to transcend. Continuing to flourish and grow on your healing journey. On your next exhale, bring your hands to Anjali Mudra or prayer in front of your heart center. And silently thank yourself for taking time to tend to your energetic body, to balance, to learn. Remember that open chakras are contagious. And so you need to allow yourself to come back to this meditation anytime you need an energy cleanse. The divine light in me honors divine light in you. Namaste. Namaste.